Hey guys, welcome back to Mastering Fusion 2.5. In this video, we're going to be doing object scoping specifically with the spread value method. And uh, we're, we're going to be going over a few cases where you might use spread value, mainly two of them because those, those are the ones that I, I use it in. So you have number one, which is the grid in which you create the objects uh, programmatically in the game and number two is objects that exist already in the frame and you might just get confused with how they work as well as that we're going to be going over iterating through the object with loops and uh, a specific use case would be uh, having some text information underneath uh, let's say some kind of player actives, for instance, in like either a multiplayer setting or NPCs or something. So, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so we have an empty frame here. We're going to make some active objects. Uh, I'm going to show you the grid method first. All right, so here we have the grid. And I made it kind of spaced out weird like this, so we can add some text underneath these actives later. But, uh... You'll see, let's actually add this right now, uh, one way to do it. I'm going to have a string down here, which is going to represent what active I'm hovering over currently. So, yeah, okay. Mass pointer is over active, change also a string to values, multiple value A. Uh, string of multiple value A. Okay, and after the creation is over, uh, we want to have another stutter frame event telling this to spread value 0 and also value A. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 9, yeah, okay, you get it. And this is like, it's kind of confusing but you understand how it works immediately so yeah um but if you already had the objects created it would be more confusing because maybe you didn't know in which order you created them so uh let's let's have them created like this just a bunch of bunch of objects so we're gonna, we're gonna keep this and this as well so now you see it's all sorts of confusing. Let's illustrate this better by having multiple actives. So every four frames, it's going to have... No, so like frame one is going to be like this. Frame two is going to have a red dot in the middle. Frame three is going to be green. Four is going to be blue. Yeah, that's fine, I think. And so... Always animation change animation. Uh, stop the animation first of all, and change uh, frame to more values. Let's write a mod four, and we should get this effect. Let's write a zero. Let's change the animation sequence to something else to maybe like this uh, pink. So when also by A is zero, change animation sequence to twelve. All right, so this is zero. And now you'll see that if I if I go back into the frame, uh I think this one was zero. Uh let's see. One of these was zero. Ah no, it's uh what? Oh no no no, it's 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 fine. Look, because this, uh, yeah, okay. All right, so, yeah. This is number zero. And if you look um, in the frame, you see that this has the highest order number out of these actives. So this, this guy's number one. He's not, like, created at start. Uh, let's have him here, I guess. Uh, so this, this guy is 81. This guy is zero. So there are 82 actives, and you can see that the the one that was 
uh, created first in the frame so that it has like the, the the biggest story the one that's like in, in the very back or like no uh, the one that's number one right that one has the highest value and the newest one which is the highest highest number here this has the smallest value all time and if what it what's confusing about this so if i uh if i click on this active and bring it to front and then respread the value again let's have a keyboard shortcut for spreading the value it's confusing because I clicked on that and you see it didn't turn pink. It it only like takes the frame order. Like the runtime order does not does not matter at all. So the frame order is more important. And so yeah, if I was to change this order bring to front, this guy is now gonna be pink, watch. Yes, see? So that's that's how it works in the frame with like uh pre-existing objects okay we have our grid very nice grid and you want to just display the, the number of the auto value you want to display the value of the alterable value beneath the active with the string here so Okay, so I've gone ahead and actually added some more stuff to the code so that I can illustrate this better. So we can see that all the actives are now bouncing around the scene and doing a bunch of shit. And you can see that the string is following their respective active. And it's like we have some display information for the active. And we can see all of them at once. So let's go over the code. We have... Uh, we create the grid of actives first, and then the actives, they, they start moving because, like, the movement and stuff. And then... Uh, we start a loop on the actives, a loop called loop. And then in that loop, we create a string. And we set the active ID of the string. So, like, the active, the, the ID of the active that the string is meant to be following. We set that to the fixed value of the active. And every, every single frame loop over all the strings and in that loop we check whether the current checked act we set the current checked active in like a controller object we set it to the active id of the string in the loop so that we can compare to it later and then uh because click team is smart we have a child event in there and we tell it to look for all the actives and if it finds one with the fixed value that is uh that matches the current checked active of the string uh, of like the controller so basically just like the current the current strings value right uh, we set the alterable string to the id which is like that number from the spread value which i mean it could be anything else in this case but we we, we kept the spread value just because and then we set the exposition relative to the active uh, just just below, and you know if if the active leaves the play area, we we bounce it. So that's how it works. And yeah, I hope you learned something from this, and you, I hope that you are slightly less confused. Uh, towards how you approach just scoping in general and click team and I hope you found this video useful and it would be highly appreciated if you uh, left a like and shared it with a friend who might find a use for this so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one